Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to wire up an expert inverter to an inverter trolley. Just a quick disclaimer before we get started. I am not licensed to install inverters and this is completely just a DIY job and completely at your own risk. Please ensure that you turn off the inverter or any power sources before you get started. In this video, I'm wiring up an expert 3000 watt Mesa inverter, but the process should be similar for any of their models. So this is the inverter that I bought. In the front, you'll see a functional display. And then at the bottom, you'll see all these screw terminals. In the far left, we have our AC in and AC out with a shared earth. We'll be connecting both the input and output earth to the same terminal at the left where that symbol is currently. And then our live input goes to the L at AC in and our neutral input goes to the N at AC in. And then Likewise, on the AC out terminals, we're going to connect the live to the L terminal and in neutral to the N terminal. You can connect this earth screw to the inverter trolley's casing. Going a bit to the right, you'll see the positive and negative terminals for your batteries. And then on the far right, you have the positive and negative screw terminals that you can connect your solar input to. To get to the screws of the screw terminals, we first have to unscrew the two screws on the side so that we can remove the top black metal section. This now reveals the screws of the screw terminals that we'll be using to loosen or tighten these terminals. Before selecting the cable to use, have a look at the sticker on the side of your inverter. In my case, the cable needs to support at least 3000 watts and almost 17 amps input and 13 amps output. I have stripped and prepared an AC input cable. As you can see, I have bent over backwards the copper wire inside the earth, live and neutral wires. This makes the wire thicker inside the screw terminals, which mitigates the possibility of accidentally coming loose in the future. I don't know if these colors are universal or differs from country to country, but in South Africa, the green and yellow is your earth, the brown is your live, and the blue is your neutral wire. So I wire them up accordingly and screw them in tightly and feel to make sure that they are secure. Please check to make sure that your country's colors align with this. Lining the colors up with the colors used inside the inverter is also a handy trick to make sure that you are wiring them up correctly. If you plug in the inverter without having a battery or output connected to it, it will just beep excessively. So let's first connect our batteries. I first connect the positive and negative wires for my batteries to the inverter. This way if a spark occurs it will happen on the battery side and not on the inverter side. Because my inverter requires 24 volts, I connect my two batteries in series by connecting the positive of one battery's terminals to the negative of the other battery's terminal. I would recommend connecting a battery balancer or sometimes called equalizer to your batteries. This can greatly enhance your battery's lifespan by automatically unloading 
the battery with more capacity into the battery with lower capacity. Unfortunately, this battery balancer has seen better days, so I'm not going to be connecting it now, but connecting the balancer to your batteries is quite simple. You connect the white wire to the wire connecting your two batteries, and then the red wire goes to your positive terminal as color coded, and the black wire goes to the remaining negative black terminal. I now connect the negative and positive wires coming from the inverter to my batteries. Even though the inverter has been plugged out and switched off, the batteries are connecting to a live system so you might see a spark. This is a great time to now plug in your inverter to make sure everything is wired up correctly. If everything went well, you should see the inverter coming on and the charging LED should be flashing once it starts charging your batteries. Well done for coming this far. Now we just need to connect our AC output. Have another look at the sticker on the side of your inverter to make sure you choose your output correctly. In my case, I am sacrificing this multi-plug, which is rated for 3500 watts, which is more than the inverter can carry. And if you look at the back, it can handle 16 amps, again, more than what the inverter can output. I cut off the multi-plugs plug and strip it. This is definitely not the most professional way of doing it, and I think each person has their own way of stripping wires. Just be careful not to damage any of the wires. After stripping the live neutral and earth wires, I again bend the copper section backwards to ensure that it sits snug inside the screw terminals. Before connecting my AC out, I disconnected the plug from the input and disconnected my live from the battery. I have to unscrew the shared earth so that I can share the same terminal between the AC in and AC out wires. I then connect the live and neutral of my AC out. After connecting my battery terminals again, it is time to do our final test. We can plug in the AC in and switch on the inverter. As a first test, I connected a lamp, which I can now switch on from the inverter. Looking at the screen, you can see it is currently being supplied directly from my AC in and the batteries are also charging from AC in. But if I plug out the AC in plug, then the lights remains on and it is powered via the batteries as indicated on the display. One last recommendation from my side would be to get an external power surge connector for your AC in to protect it from potential power surges. Lastly, we just need to put back the top cover and screw it back into place. Congratulations, you have a working inverter running off your batteries. I hope this video was helpful. Please let me know in the comments if I can improve on something. See you next time.